Hey everybody, my name is Rebecca Ray and I'm here in East Blue Hill at the East Blue Hill Library and tonight is a special night for Bedtime Stories with Rebecca Ray. I have a very special, old, based on an old historical device, it's called the Cranky. And in the 1800s, when the sailors would go out to sea, they would have so many stories. There was no TV or iPhone or anything like that. So they would do their paintings on a big mural piece of paper and put it on a device called a cranky, as you have been witnessing. So today I'm going to share with you a bedtime story I hope you're cozy in your bed with your favorite little animals around you and you're warm in your pajamas. I'm getting ready to put my pajamas on too. We're going to start with The Very Best Bed, written and illustrated by Rebecca Ray. This is a Tilbury House nature book. Very best the little gray squirrel was so busy finding nuts and seeds to store away for the winter that he hadn't noticed it was getting cold and dark. He needed to find a cozy bed for the night. There was a nice den nearby under a fallen tree but it was already very, very full with a big bear. Could he find a nest up in the old pine tree? But then he heard the sound of a barred owl hooting. It sounded like, was just waking up. Soon he would start hunting in the moonlight. The squirrel jumped up to a great pile of rocks. There was a safe little cave there, but when he peeked inside, he saw a red fox snuggled up with his warm bushy tail. What if the fox woke up hungry too? Good for the squirrel. It might be safer up on the tall maple tree. So up, up, up he climbed. A family of bats was hanging upside down from the branches. The squirrel tried it too, but it made his head ache. Upside down isn't such a good way for a squirrel to sleep. With a big jump, the squirrel leaped to a nearby apple tree. Down below, he saw a trail of nibbled apples. They looked delicious. Two deer rested there. It would be warm to snuggle between them, but they woke up and started to move away. Deer only sleep for a few hours at a time. followed a cottontail rabbit, hop, hop, hopping towards a group of thick young spruce trees. It was headed for a small hollow in the grass, lined with leaves. What a perfect place to sleep. Too bad it was only big enough for one rabbit. Down by the water's edge, the squirrel saw ducks and geese sleeping on rafts of reeds and cattails. The gentle waves rocked them back and forth. But the squirrel didn't want to get his own little feet wet. A ripple of water caught his eye. He watched two seals bobbing upright and a harbor porpoise 
gently rolling on the surface of the water. It looked like they didn't mind sleeping in the water at all. Imagine that. At the pond, on his way back to the woods, the squirrel saw a big, just a big old beaver slapping his flat tail on the water and dived down into the lodge in the middle of the pond. But the squirrel certainly did not want to get his fluffy tail wet. It was just as bad as wet feet. The sky was getting darker, but the squirrel noticed a tiny hole at the base of an oak tree. He peeked inside and saw a chipmunk sleeping on a bed of leaves and grass. There were lots of seeds nearby in case he woke up hungry. It looked very, very cozy, especially with a snack so handy but there wasn't quite enough room for a squirrel, too. Oh, poor the squirrel is very tired. So the squirrel began to climb higher and higher up the oak tree. He saw Mama Raccoon resting on a branch next to a bigger hole in the tree. But when he looked inside, there was a nest full of raccoon babies. It didn't look like they would be going to sleep anytime soon. As you know, raccoons are up most of the night. The squirrel kept climbing higher and higher and higher. And there sheltered under a branch was an empty woodpecker's nest. <laughs> Quick as a flash, the squirrel scampered down the tree and gathered some grass and moss and leaves. Then he made the very best bed there ever was. He curled up under his fluffy tail and slept and slept and slept all night long. Do you think the squirrel had the very best bed of all? And in this painting, you can see everybody that was talked about in the story. Some are waking up, some are going to sleep. When the sun is rising, everybody's going back. The owl would be going to bed and the bats would be going to bed. The beaver would probably go to sleep then too. I hope you enjoyed that story. And in the back, there are special facts about each one of the characters. For instance, the squirrel in the story is a gray squirrel and gray squirrels are common in the United States and Canada. They are active, active during the day and they sleep at night. Their teeth are shaped for gnawing seed and nuts. So if you'd like to learn more about these animals, please check out The Very Best Bed by Rebecca Rigg.